Before I was deported the second time, I was already working and advocating for deported veterans. Uh, and what happened is when I got deported the second time, I was connected with some of the veterans that were fighting their cases. And when they would get deported, they would just come stay with me. My name is Hector Barajas Varela, and I'm uh, a former military. I served uh, in the U.S. Army from 1995 through 2001 to enlistments, honorable discharge. I served with the 82nd Airborne uh, as a paratrooper. My MOS was 71 Golf Patient Administration. And basically, uh, uh, right now we're in Tijuana, Baja, California. I am a deported veteran. I served the U.S. military and was deported after serving a prison sentence for a discharge of a firearm. I did two years and I was deported the first time in 2004, second time uh, after I got caught. I was in 2010, and since then I've decided to stay here in Tijuana. We're at the Deported Veterans Support House, and this is where we work out of. This is my little office over here, and uh, this is what we work with a group of deported women. And this is all we have for our daily schedules. We try to stick to that order, but everything changes because we get different visitors. You know, here in the hallway, we have uh, whenever we get uh, donations, clothing, food, hygiene kits, we put it in their cupboard so they can come and pick it up or sometimes we drop it off. And this is just visually so people could see what kind of veterans that we come into contact with so since September. Eventually, slowly, um, started getting connected with more veterans and um, in 2013, I had lost my job and I decided why don't I try doing this full time and then work, work as well? So I decided to open it. Didn't really know what I was getting into, and uh, over the years, we, my thoughts were just people are just going to stay here and that's it, and nothing else. And then over the years, we become more of a resource center, and we had congressional visits. We've been able to get the guys their VA benefits, and uh, we have a database of veterans being deported to 42 countries and a couple hundred men and women. So this is where we cook our meals, or do a little mess hall, chow hall. <laughs> you can be deported for various reasons. You can be deported for something small as writing a bad check, to being deported from uh, having a couple of ounces of marijuana, cocaine, to carrying a couple of hundred pounds. You know, it just varies from person to person. There's nothing there's no set pattern of what crimes are being committed. The only pattern I see is for the vets that are com combat vets, that their PTSD has played a role in their, their decision making of when they come back and uh, the things that lead them to getting into trouble. You know, but they still have to pay their debt to society. They're not getting, just because they have PTSD doesn't mean they're gonna get away with uh, whatever crime it is, be it domestic violence or, uh, you know, small drug offense. They still have to serve their time and then they're still being deported. And this is where the guys sleep at. So we have three cots that we can put right here. Maybe put another, one, another fourth one over here. And if we get more than four people, we can just get rid of the weight set. But this is where the guys will sleep at. There's a workstation and a TV where they can use the internet. And um, sometimes we get medical equipment. Some of the guys may need a wheelchair. Uh, we put this up for one of the brothers that's in rehab. We have two guys in a rehab center right now and he's still running marathons actually. And um, so whenever he gets like a little medal, he puts it up here to kind of build some self-esteem and give him a sense of worth. <laughs> so, this, uh, that's about it for a little place here. Well, we need, we need to get home. We need to be back with our families. We want to go back to the country that we love and that we're willing to serve and die for. You know, when we served in the military, uh, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of racism and, and people separate by groups, but at the end of the day, we got the job done together. And for the combat vets, at the end of the day, you were, you know, you were depending on the man or woman next to you. And you just, you know, the uniform, that person that served with you. So I think it's very important that we continue with that motto of leaving no man behind and that we uh, still support our veterans 
and support our troops uh, regardless of their situation, whether they're they taking their life because we have 22 suicides happening every day, whether they're homeless, we have thousands of homeless veterans, we have thousands in the prisons. So just because somebody makes a mistake, I don't think that you should be punished forever. Yes, you should pay for if you commit a crime or get treatment, but you shouldn't be deported.